Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming races in Hong Kong and try to isolate an angle to the race we might look back on later as having been a path to finding the winner. Well, it's a big, important day in racing in Hong Kong on Sunday with the running of the international trial races, the Jockey Club Cup, Mile and Sprint with all the best horses in Hong Kong racing on display on their way to the Longines uh, Hong Kong International Races in three weeks' time. And the first race I'm going to take a look at is one of those. It's race seven. It's the Jockey Club Mile and our winning factor here, the conditions. And while we have uh, all the stars out on Sunday at Sha Tin, for me, this is the race of the day, even the race of the season so far. We've got Wai Kuku in there in his role these days as the zero on the roulette wheel. But otherwise, it's difficult to see any winner other than Golden 60 or California Spangle. And uh, this is a really exciting clash between these uh, two uh, top talents. So I'm going to take a good look at this race and this pair has only met once before and that was in April this year in the Champions Mile. So we better take a look at the replay of that. This is going back to race 611 last season and California Spangle, he's in the red and yellow colours, bounces out and goes to the lead from gate 5. Golden 60 in the familiar white colours with the yellow spots, gate 2. And he takes the rails behind the lead few and... Uh, California Spangle, you see, just gets a little bit keen to run in the uh, early section with that uh, horse at his uh, hindquarters, while Golden 60, he's just able to hold that position behind uh, the leaders on the rail and gets an absolutely perfect trip, even making up ground cheaply from the uh, 800 to 400 uh, when the leader does slow them up on the circle. From there, I guess there can only be one winner and Golden 60 uh, gets around California Spangle and after a brief tussle, he comes clear. Well, that was then, this is now. Time is a wonderful thing, heals all wounds, waits for no man and it can do great things for a horse's manners in a race. And in two starts this season, we've seen that California Spangle seems to have lost that inclination to pull a bit and go faster than his riders want him to go in the lead. And that's going to make him much tougher to beat this season. So we'll take a look at his most recent offering. And this was also at Group 2 level, Handicap Conditions. And uh, this is in race 100 this season. And there he is again, the red and yellow. He's first out of the gates for Zach Purton. And you see on the heat map, he did have to go a little quicker than average to uh, cross from gate 12 with a couple of horses punching up under him looking for positions. But he was only just into our red zone here. And then what I really liked was the way he calmly switched off once he crossed, even being restrained without objection to run quite a soft second section. Then from the 800 metres, you can see on the heat map, he uh, uh, picked up again. Uh, no flashing uh, great sectionals here, but he did keep up a good strong gallop. And that was enough as he comes away and holds his rivals down to the line. So California Spangle, uh, he's had those two races, so he has a fitness edge on Golden 60. He looks a much kinder horse when he runs to the lead uh, this season. And he also gets a five pound weight pull under the conditions of this race. Now, what's five pounds between horses, you might say? Well, have a look at this table. Because uh, this is a look at the uh, Group 2 races in Hong Kong. Uh, there are five a season, including these three on Sunday. Uh, set weights and allowances, and these races have always fascinated me. The Group 1 winners during the previous year concede at least five pounds to their non-Group 1 winning rivals, and that five pounds does seem to be the weight of the world. Uh, this table goes back to 2011. You see only a slightly better strike rate uh, for the uh, Group 1 winners, many of them are the champions of Hong Kong racing with the higher weight, but from a betting point of view, they fail by a clear margin to meet the expectations of the market, while the horses are getting weight off them overperform. We've seen some superstars bowled over in these races regularly at well into odds on, and that's not just the mile races, it's all these races on Sunday under the same umbrella.
So is that all for the sake of five pounds? Well, perhaps not. Perhaps there's more at play here. Uh, the Group 1 horses uh, may not be completely wound up. Their big target is three weeks away, whereas the horses getting the weight off them are often uh, up-and-comers trying to establish their bona fides for the international races to come. So that's also the scenario that we face on Sunday. And when we take a look at the map, there are also favours there for California Spangle. Golden 60 this time doesn't have the luxury of a draw here that will land him straight on California Spangle's back like the last time, even if there was any pressure on the leader, and there's no guarantee that will happen. We've seen that California Spangle can now relax and slow them down in front as opposed to before, and the only threat to him doing that is the overmatched King Shield. Now, he's a fascinating runner in the race. He's a dirt specialist, and off his turf form, uh, he's about a 999 to 1 chance to win this, but he does have speed. He's the only one that could challenge the leader and change the pace, but will he? Over the years, he's had his own problems relaxing in front himself until his latest dirt win when he went very slowly in the lead and held on to win. So will he remain calm here or revert to his older style and add some spice to things tactically? Either way, he can't win but he can influence the race for the favourites. But for me, the tip in race seven is California Spangle. His winning factor, the conditions. Now, I'm certainly not underselling Golden 60, a horse who's been beaten only twice in three years, mind you. Uh, so he's an established champion. He will be a worthy favourite in the race. But I do think he finds an opponent worthy of his mettle here, uh, a horse who's race fit, California Spangle and we have seen over the years how the conditions of this race and that five pound weight pull can make a difference. The other race I want to take a look at is race 10 and our winning factor here the weights. Now it's a class 3 1400 metres to finish the day and there will be uh, claims made for Eremo to make it three in a row at this course and distance and the horse he beat two starts back winner method has a good weight swing on him Master Hero has a chance at the handicaps. Good Buddy's racing well and looks suited by the extra distance. And right down the bottom of the weights, Happy Day has also been in good form. But I'm focusing on three horses here in particular. Uh, Winner Method, uh, ridden by visiting uh, rider uh, James McDonald. Eremo, once again, Zach Purton. And Hugh Bowman's mount, Good Buddy. And we're going to take a look at the clash of Eremo and Winner Method. This is two starts ago for Eremo, but it's the most recent start for Winner Method. We have to go back to October. This is race 82. And gate one, red and black colours, uh, yellow cap is Eremo. He begins well enough to find the box seat, while uh, Winner Method in light green and yellow colours from gate nine shows his usual early speed to roll forward outside uh, the quick leader quadruple double. Now there's no great pressure here in the race until the leader decides to pick it up from the 800 metres and puts in a strong uh, sectional at that stage while Winner Method and Eremo let him go and they're racing side by side tracking him. In the straight, well it's Eremo who uh, gets around the leader and gets clear in the final 200 metres and Winner Method he has no real answer to that, he's all out to finish second. So since that race, Eremo has won again in very similar circumstances and as a result of the two re-handicaps he's had, he now meets Winner Method on £10 worse terms. And worth noting that after that race, Winner Method was reported by the vets uh, with some internal bleeding issues, so he may not have been at his best that day. Now the other horse that uh, I want to take a look at, of course, is Good Buddy. And, he had a long time off racing uh, with the injury uh, before resuming in September with a bit of a surprise win over 1,200 metres. But since then, he's ran uh, very well again at that distance. And we're going to have a look at his most recent. This is race 148, and he's in red colours with black and white checked sleeves and cap. He has barrier eight. Uh, this is two weeks ago in a, a race where the pace was just sound early, but got much more serious in the middle stages and he travels midfield, travels well, even a touch outsped when the leaders quicken up so the extra distance this time is probably going to help him. 
The winner turns for home several lengths closer than him. Science Patch up ahead in the white colours. But good buddy, he just keeps on coming in the run of the line to get very close when the post arrives. Now, he's already won over 1,400 metres in the past, and I think that distance is what he's really looking for now. When we take a look at the map, well, all these horses are going to be helped by the way this race shapes up. Massive Action and Winner Method look the most likely front runners, but Master Hero, Eremo and Good Buddy all look to take up handy spots behind them. I don't see any crazy pace, not crazy fast, not crazy slow either. So uh, just a uh, decent uh, controlled pace here. And I think being near the speed looks like the place where the race is going to be run. And once again, that puts all of our main chances in the mix. However, for me, the tip is good buddy in race 10, his winning factor, the weights. Now, while all these horses have uh, great chances, they're in good form and they all get a nice map, uh, the top two winner method and Eremo have to concede 12 pounds to good buddy at the weights. And I don't think that he's that far behind them. So that gives him a great chance of turning them over. Well, that's it from the winning factor this week. Enjoy the big racing on Sunday. We'll see you next time.